Jane here again and today I am back in the kitchen because as you can probably see from what's in front of me I'm going to try and make something with these beautiful beautiful colourful Seville oranges and look they're even joined together I don't know they always seem a lot fresher if you've actually got a leaf on them so yeah today I'm going to try for the very first time ever in my life ever to make some marmalade because I always miss that very very short window of marmalade making that's sort of early January to sort of mid-February over here in the UK because that's when the Seville oranges become available in the shops and so I thought to myself if I do get the chance I'm going to do it and of course what have I done I've not just done it myself to try and perfect it first I thought I'd bring you along with me and so if I make a mistake hopefully you'll learn from it as well as me and uh, we'll be able to get on with it I've got to say also I've I've sort of argued with myself about doing this because this is an allotment channel and I have not you'll be surprised to know I have not grown these oranges at my allotment but it's still to do with preserving food and I know we're normally sort of preserving time is autumn when we have all our beautiful harvests of fruits and onions, loads of apples, all that sort of thing, and jamming earlier on in the summer and everything. But yeah, I just thought it's something I wanted to do and I thought it'd be fun. And actually, it's a little bit more interesting than yesterday when I was up at the allotment, but um, I was tidying out the shed. What would you rather? <laughs> Quite a lot of people actually um, really like the clearing out the greenhouse episode. I'll put a link somewhere wherever it goes. Um, but yes, yeah, so I just imagine it was just like that, but dark. That's all I can say. And I haven't finished. But anyway, it's not really the weather for it today either. It's a good marmalade making weather day. So I asked on the Facebook group, links below, what were people's tried and tested marmalade recipes because again you really need to get recommendations from people at this sort of thing or I certainly do so I had quite a few nice comments and this is the one I am going to go with and I've forgotten who sent it me but it's just a traditional Seville orange marmalade and the reason I chose this one over the others was this one from start to finish is only supposed to take four hours the others you had to leave overnight, you have to leave things steeping and things like that. So I am going to attempt to get this done today because I've got a free day today. But sadly, <laughs> due to my life being what it's like, it's 20 past two now. Um, so if I give myself four hours, it's going to be dark by the time I finish. So yeah, we are going to have to get the lights out for the later bit. But hopefully if we, are, if we do get to the stage where we're going to manage to uh, put them in jars we'll be able to see what they're like in the dark. So what I'm gonna do, I'll tell you what I've got. I have got, first and foremost, one kilogram, two something, no, is it two pounds? One kilogram, yeah, it's about 2.2 .2 pounds, isn't it? I'm gonna do it in kilograms, because that's how it's written in the recipe. Kilogram of Seville oranges. It calls for one lemon. But these are tiny, tiny, look, they're about the size of my eyes. So I've got two lemons, two kilograms of sugar, which I'm trying to keep the name towards me, which does, I mean, really, you know, considering it's full of fruit, you think it might be healthy. I, my teeth are corroding just looking at those, but it's the same with jam or anything, isn't it? That's what's going to help it preserve well. Two kilograms of sugar, and I don't pick this jug of water up because it is so so full um so yeah two liters of water in there and apparently first thing i need to do pour the water in the pan take these out and then the fun bit begins where i start juicing the seville oranges so i'm going to bring you over and see what you think Now you've got a headless me. <laughs> Still doesn't stop me talking though. Right, here I've got my trusty old brass 
jam pan, scrupulously clean, has not saying that, oh dear, there we go, uh, hasn't been used since last summer for my raspberry jam. And what I'm gonna do, honestly, I'm really worried about the lifting this water up. I'm going to, you'll see why in a minute. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. I'm gonna put my two litres of water in there. Right, I'm gonna use this again in a minute. So water is now out of there and safely in my jam pan. Let's move that out of the way. That wasn't too bad. We can rub that in and pretend it never happened. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm gonna to have to split these two little friends up, but okay, I have got, <laughs> you'll notice when I get a bit nervous about something, I say okay a lot. Okay, <laughs> there I go again. What I want to be doing now is juicing my oranges. Now, a lot of you might have a very posh mixer that's got a juicing attachment in it, and this will take you minutes, if not seconds. I have got one of these old fashioned glass juices, and I must admit, I absolutely love them to look at. I haven't actually used one at all to squeeze anything on for quite some time. <laughs> so I may well be cursing it by the time I'm on the fourth orange, but let's just have a look and see how it goes. So I'm going to chop my orange in half. I am left-handed, I know it looks a bit uncomfortable for those of you right-handers out there. I wanna keep the pips, you'll see why in a minute. I'm gonna squeeze them in here. And after I've squeezed them, I'm going to tip them into this here jug, okay, so, or rather I'm going to tip the juice into there. Oh, you know what, actually it's really nice. And what you don't get as I'm doing this is the smell. Oh, it's delicious. It just smells healthy. You know, there's a certain time in the winter, and I always think the Body is amazing at doing this. Look at all those pips, we need those. Um, where I actually crave oranges. And I think it's just that, it's your body needs that vitamin C and it, it tells you, doesn't it? Or it tells me when it's craving something. I've got a tiny pip in there, but you know what, I'm gonna leave it. What's lovely about these as well though, is look how they catch the pips around like that. I think that's really clever. I know it's not clever either, really, but soon enough that's gone on me. <laughs> soon enough that's going to get too full and your pips are going to go back into your juice. So keep making sure you empty that bit out. Okay, one done. Might try and get that pip out. Yeah, there we go. Because on its own, those pips, if you ever bite into them, they're a little bit bitter. And I don't want the marmalade itself to be bitter. That's why I'm putting a whole load of sugar in. Right, okay. One down, one, two, three, four, five to go. Okay, let's see you at the other end. So what we're left with is all this gorgeous, gorgeous, I wish you could smell it, freshly squeezed orange juice in this jug here. We've got all the pips, well not all of them because a couple did escape into there, but most of the pips we've saved in here for a very good reason, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And we're left with all these half oranges over here. And it's those that we're going to, going to deal with next. All right, before I start that, um, I'm gonna pour this juice into the very, very full pan of water, like this. It seems a shame at the moment, doesn't it? I could have just drunk that like that. Okay, so that's there in the water. And now what we're going to need are the fruit shells. Let me get these, some teaspoons, and quite a lot of patience. Right then, 
this is the, the bit where the sun's come out outside and I'm thinking I'd much rather be at the allotment. But no, I'll carry on. Okay, I'm going to use this jug again. Where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it, let's swing that round. I'll put it here. Okay, and basically what we're going to have to do, in fact, I'm going to put the pips, oh no, I'll keep the pips out for now. What we're going to have to do is try and scrape out as much of the pith which is the white stuff that nobody really likes on the outside of the orange and the pips as possible. Oh, you know what? Hey, this might not be too bad. So look at that. And we're gonna keep that because this is really, really valuable for setting your marmalade because this, I'm gonna to have to try and have a look as well. This is full of pectin which is one of the reasons um, I quite fancy this recipe because it's like with raspberry jam. Raspberry jam to me is one of the most straightforward things to do. I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time. Look, one done, perfect. Um, one of the most straightforward things to do because it's got its own pectin. Strawberry, you have to add a little or you can add an apple or you can add things to it to help it set, but raspberry, I love it, it's dead straightforward. So this is as straightforward as that. I know it's a faff with the preparation, but actually look at that, look at that, that's great. Okay, <laughs> she says again, <laughs> having done one, one's good, right. I'm gonna take that little, oh, I'll take that off later actually with the next step. Okay, I'm gonna get on with this and keep all this pith in this jug and show you what I'm going to do with it next. Job done. There we go. One big jug of pith. <laughs> Doesn't sound very good, does it? What I've got to do now is try and get that into my again trusty old muslin bag now believe you me this is absolutely spotless this gets a boil wash every time i've used it so like i say do make sure it doesn't look very clean does it it's, i don't know on the camera screen there it looks gray i find that that happens though with white things i always remember at school i was always aware that my socks looked very gray but i know my mum cleaned them really well right okay Pith, in we go. That's the other nice thing about this recipe, you know, you're not wasting anything, you're not throwing anything away. I know you wouldn't anyway, you put it on the compost, but this is using everything but the squeak, as you might say, if you were using a pig. <laughs> it's an old saying, don't ask me to explain it. Right, okay, not just the pith, but the pips from the lemon and the oranges. And I think now those bowls are finished with, so that part can go. What we will do with this, if I move this over for you. Oh, Rocky's coming to join in now. He thinks I'm talking to him. Let me just move this. Oh, this is very, I've got to get this over to the, the stove in a minute. Right, there we have our two litres of water and our kilograms worth of Seville orange juice. I have got my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful muslin bag full of all sorts of, I've got to stop saying it, haven't I? All sorts of pith. <laughs> Sorry, mum and dad, if you're watching. Right, okay, and I am going to just, this is meant to just hang over the side, but basically you want that submerged. Let's get rid of that one, another bowl gone. You want that submerged in your water because all the goodness from that is going to come through and I will figure out some sort of way of attaching it. Let's see if I can do it this way. Higher up so it's not completely bulked up in the water. There we go. Okay, so all we have to do now, she says, we can move that to one side. It's lovely to win because when you start doing these recipes, you start getting everything out. And it's lovely then to start being able to put things away. Right, what we need to do now is slice up this peel to add texture and extra flavour to our marmalade. So I'm going to get on with that. Obviously, you're not going to want to get that little stalk bit in there. So let's just get rid of him. 
it feels like a waste now. He should have gone in a muslin bag, shouldn't he? Right, now I'm going to try and do this thing where you roll it. I know you're all shouting at the screen. I really hope it's not too encouraging. Hey, it's working, you know, it's working. Now I'm assuming by the time you've boiled the heck out of this, the white bits of the, oh, here comes Rocky again. You can hear his little paws. The white bits of the, um, the pithy bits are going to have boiled off and in turn help the, <laughs> can you see him, he's down here? Help the marmalade, I keep calling it jam, marmalade to set. But it actually feels like quite a Christmassy thing because it's like, oh dear, he's sniffing around. I don't know if you can, can you can just come and say hello? We shouldn't have you too close to everything, should we? See? <laughs> can see you. Just off camera down here, I've got a little dog wagging his tail. Very excited when everything, anything's going on in the kitchen. Right, that's a bit too thick to roll. I must have done, oh no, it is, isn't. You know, at Christmas where you, um, Clementines, or as we used to always call them, little oranges. Because I don't think when I was young, I don't think in the 70s, we used terms, we certainly didn't, like satsumas and tangerines and whatever the other one is. Certainly didn't have any kumquats. But, uh, yeah, we used to always call them little oranges. And it's only really in the last 10 years or so I've sort of realised they've all got different names. Seville oranges were new to me until quite recently. Right, OK, I'm going to carry on doing this. I'm quite enjoying it. It's actually very therapeutic. And you've got that lovely, lovely smell of oranges coming at you the whole time. And again, other people will be able to do it like that, but I don't, I do it this way. So I'll come back at you when I've got a broth full of gorgeous peel. There we go, look at that. An absolute pot of orangey delight. Um, it's taken me an hour from when I started, but that has included a couple of unnecessary phone calls um, that I wasn't expecting. So yeah, it is quite labour intensive, but when you think it is only this very short window of the year that you get to make this. So if you miss it, you've missed it for the next year. So I'm really, really glad I've got it underway. This is now going to stay on the stove. It's going to come to the boil and then I'm going to boil it rapidly for a few minutes and then turn it right down to a simmer for two hours. <laughs> two hours, but during that time I can get washed up, I can go away, I have a cup of coffee and I can prepare the jars for later. So yeah, I'll be back in a little while. Okay, this has had now just over two hours and as with anything that you simmer for that amount of time, it's reduced quite considerably but also all that beautiful, beautiful peel in there, can you see that, has gone nice and tender. So that's what we wanted, we don't want to stop simmering it until it is tender, you don't want really chewy bits in there. Now that's done, what I've got to do is lift this out, the bag of pith, and wait for that to cool down. Probably give it about 20 minutes or so, just know it's, so it's not piping hot. And uh, I'll come back and show you what we do next. So this has now cooled down enough for me to be able to squeeze this bag through my hands what on earth are you doing that for, Jane? I'll tell you. Because I want to get, oh, the flashlight's just come on, can you see? I want to get all that I can, all of that pithy goodness in there. Can you see that coming out there? Must be very good for your hands, she says, because they're getting covered in orange oil, plus other things. Look, there's a big goopy bit there. And once this is in the, oh, actually, it's quite tough. 
Oh, look at that. That's more like it. That's proper big bits. I can feel the bag getting smaller now. Um, while I'm doing this, I've had the sugar in the oven warming through. Not too warm, but you want it so that... Let's squeeze that down a bit. This feels a little bit... I feel like a vet and I'm not quite sure why. Um, the sugar is warming through so that when it goes into the marmalade, when it goes into this mixture here, it's not going to cool it down so much. So, this is why really you've got to have something quite tough. Okay. What I've got here is the gloopy, gloopy mixture. <gasps> That's a little bit of the top of the lemon, I can see there, a little bit of the stalk, never mind. And I've got the warm sugar that I've just warmed in a Pyrex bowl in the oven. And I'm just gonna stir this over a low heat. Sorry, the camera doesn't know whether to turn the uh, light on or not, so it will keep going light and dark. Disco marmalade. Um, we, this is something you can't rush. You have just got to go nice and slowly because we are going to get this thoroughly, and believe you me, there's a lot of it, thoroughly dissolved before we turn it up to the boil. Because once it's dissolved, basically you've got your whole marmalade there, and all you've got to do then is cook it through on a high boil and that will release everything that needs to be released so the pectin will all enter the um, the juice and the peel and hopefully after about 20 minutes on a rapid boil it should look like it's going to set this sugar just keeps going doesn't it look at that I'm getting a bit quicker aren't I Tried not to be slapdash about it. <laughs> okay, we'll get the rest of this in. Right, I am now happy that this sugar has dissolved beautifully into my marmalade and resulted in a lovely, lovely syrup. So the next job is to get this whole thing to reach setting point. To do that, I'm going to turn it onto a high heat and bring it to a fast boil. Once it's reached a fast boil, I'm going to keep it there for a good 20 minutes until it reaches setting point, which on my thermometer, I've got myself a special little um, jam thermometer years ago, it saves so much trouble. I've actually got a little arrow there, which tells me when it's 104 degrees, which centigrade which tells me it's reached setting point however if you haven't got a thermometer you can do the thing where you put um, a couple of plates in the freezer bring one out after 20 minutes drop a little bit of syrup on it like so if it um, forms a little skin and you it forms wrinkles when you push it with your finger you know it's reached setting point I used to always do that and it was my least favourite bit um, of the whole jam making, marmalade making process. So, this time I've got my thermometer there. I'm going to turn this up, bring it to a rapid boil, and we'll come and see how it's getting on in 20 minutes' time. Right then, here we are. It's been 20 minutes. It has been kept at 104 degrees. It actually reached 104 really quickly, but um, I've kept it on a nice rolling boil. But what I'm going to do now, I've actually just turned the heat off and I'm going to leave it for about another 20 minutes before I moved on to the final step. And I, I'll explain that to you in a little bit. Okay, this is the bit I'm really excited about because the fact that I've never done it before <laughs> and it looks like it's worked. And the microphone cuts out round about here. <laughs> I'm actually watching this after the event, trying to work out what I'm doing with my hands. I think what I'm saying is the reason I left the marmalade to cool a little bit is that when you're filling the jars, you want it to have thickened slightly so that all of your... Um, 
peel doesn't float to the top. It's evenly distributed. And now, look at that, look at that. I think I'm about to have a little taste of the marmalade. Oh, off camera. Off camera, which of course is what all the top chefs do. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm probably saying about just how nice it tastes, how good it is. Obviously, you wouldn't um, taste it if it had just come off the heat. It'd be way too hot. But was it good? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, there we go. There's the thumbs up. So I've got some nicely, slightly cooled marmalade. I've got my jars that I've sterilised in the dishwasher. Many different ways you can sterilise your jars. Just Google online. Put them in the oven. Wash them in nice hot water. Finish them off in the microwave. <coughs> What you do want to make sure is your jars are not cold. You've got to have them warm slightly because you've got to make sure they're not going to crack because um, you are putting what is basically a hot liquid into a glass jar. And if they are too cold, the jars might crack. So lots of hands there. Oh, yeah, here we go. I'm going to use my little funnel. Well worth an investment if you're doing this more than once or twice. They only cost a little bit of money. But as long as they fit into your jars, they, they're really, really useful. So here we go. Here we go. Look, we're using a ladle. We're going to pick up that lovely, lovely... I keep feeling like it's nectar. It's not honey, but it, to me... Oh, it's just so good. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, you know what? I think partly... The thrill for me this time is the fact it's the first time I've done it and it's the fact that it's actually working. Oh my goodness, that is such a thrill. Okay, what I'm going to be doing now is filling up all of the jars to the brim. Hopefully I'll have enough lids to cover them with and uh, I'll come back to you when they're done. And there we have it. Look at that. Who would have thought I would ever have a workshop full of homemade marmalade? Certainly not me. <laughs> At least five and a half hours ago, which is when I started. So yeah, it is labor intensive. It does take a long time, but you know what? The flavor is unlike anything I've ever tasted in a shop-bought marmalade. It's, it's just got a real depth to it. And I mean, I don't know if you can see the colour. Let me try and get around here without knocking everything off. One sec. It's just, again, oh, you can't see. Can you see that? The colour is rich. It really is like a little pot of sunshine. <laughs> 